Good morning and welcome back to another video and today is another day of the zero to gold cap challenge. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay so as like yesterday we have farmed up a dungeon and today we have farmed up Stratholme. Yes we are going through the service entrance over here of Stratholme. We don't actually go to Stratholme. The east wall gate is what the one where we use to farm with. You can actually farm up the other one but I prefer to use the service entrance because that one is a completely different er er area of Strathholm and I find this one that drops the best loot. And overall we're going to be doing a run through today of how I prefer to run Strathholm and also is it actually worth it to actually farm up and what did we actually get. Now, that being the case, let's open up our mobile banking because we are awesome. And that that being the case, let's go into inscription two, apparently. We got a ton of reinforced steel lock boxes as well. So we're filling these out nicely overall. And we got quite a lot of green and recipes. You do get things like blight from here. Those are other things like some formula enchants for greater stamina. You also get quite a few different types of green items that you can sell in the auction house, like the Evan Hold cloak that we got, for, which is currently on our auction house for 445 gold. And overall, you can get a wide variety of unique little transmogs and all that stuff. That being the case, what did we actually get? And now I'm really proud of this because I only did two hours farming of this and we actually got some really awesome drops from this. As a person who used to actually farm up Stratholme quite a lot, going a couple of years ago when I was really heavily into transmog. These drops are rare. Now I want to bear that one in mind. These ones don't drop just like that. I was very, very lucky to get them in two hours. The things of note that we actually got were a really crappy one, which was a crappy BOE, because this one's quite common to actually get a hold of. And that one currently goes for like 20 gold. That is the Sacred Cloth Leggings. Now the things of note that were rather rare to actually get a hold of was the Strathholm Militia Shoulder Guards. Now these ones are currently on my auction house for 88,725 gold. The market value average, the market value is 89,163 gold and the region market value average is at 55,000 gold. The other one of note is the Juno's Shadow, which is a back piece, which is currently on our auction house for 148,016 gold, or a market value of 139,504 gold. The region market value average for that one is 90,081 gold. Overall, that has pretty much summarized what we actually got. If I did not get these two things, I was going I would have said Stratholm is a bit of a bust, like straight out of the bat, but we got incredibly lucky with this, so overall really happy. Along with that, we also got a hold of Essence of Undeath. We got 13 of those, which is used for the Tome of Illusions Azeroth. And also we got quite a lot of Mage Weave Cloth, which is 1,674 well, 1, of that. Doesn't sell for an awful lot, but we got a lot of it. We also got a hold of Shadow Silk, which is used to make the Shadow Silk headband, I believe, or the cowl, I, I can't remember. It's used to make a transvolg item, which is called Shadow Weave or something to that effect. Now, that being the case, the Thick Spider Silk, we got some of that as well, and we got some more Aquamarine and the Star Rubies. We also kept some of our Icar of Undeath just because the sell rate was at 0.1, so I was like, well, I'm definitely going to do that. That's like 78 gold right there. But overall, it actually turned out quite well. We have three Mithril Ore because there are nodes all over the area, and there was one right next to that vendor right there. Other than that, was Strathholm actually worth doing? Now, this is where my answer may get a bit funny, so bear with me on this. Strathholm, overall, for padding out your auction house for Transmog, I would not recommend. The thing that I would mention, however, is once you have padded out your auction house, it's definitely worth running. That is because you get a, quite an okay amount of green items. You get quite a 
few materials, but overall you're mainly going for the high ticket items. Therefore, it would be the same as Alderman, whereas if you're wanting to pad out your auction house, I wouldn't do it. But if you wanted to actually go for those high ticket items, definitely worth farming for. So, that being the case, if you haven't got at least 2,000 items on your auction house for transmog selling, then don't farm Stratholme. But if you do have an excess of that and you are pulling in some regular gold with your transmog, then it's definitely worth farming up Stratholme. So overall, if so if overall if you're doing well already with transmog, then it's worth farming up Stratholme. If not, then go somewhere else to actually pad out your auction house first before you go about actually farming this dungeon up. Because these ticket high ticket items take a long time to sell and in my time of actually farming up transmog items over the last few years when I actually got heavily into it, I only have ever seen one of those only once and that was the Stratholme Militia Shoulder Guards. So just bear that one in mind that you that there is a low chance of probability of getting a hold of some of those items. That being the case, let's run into Stratholme and we can actually show you the actual route in which I like to take and then we can do the gold for the day. Now coming into Stratholme, I tend to like doing this and I immediately grab aggro from one of these guys and use my Tiger Dash. This is where I'll gather up all of the mobs right now and basically they're just going to follow me all around there. Some of those are casters, so I try and hide myself around a wall, which you will see in a second. The next thing of note is I actually click on the Nerubian guy there and I use Soothe. That's to grab his aggro, in which he will actually grab the Banshee's aggro. And then all I do is click on the skeleton over there, and I was hoping not to actually get um, stunned with that web trap. And then I use Soothe again on him, and then I kill the boss to open up the area, and hopefully we don't. Those Nerubians do like to hold you still with their encased webs. That is kind of annoying when it comes to actually doing the Stratholme farm, but other than that, all you do is run into the Ziggurat, and then you just use your AoE, which overall doesn't actually worry about that all that much. You just have to wait till all the mobs come round, you kill them and then you just loot. So what we'll do is pull up Loot Appraiser because we're actually going to be doing a full run of this and apparently my auto loot's tending to be a bit funny. Now that being the case, we haven't got an awful lot of gold on that first pull. Remember, Stratholme is mainly for the high ticket items, not the regular items. Anything else that comes along with that is mainly just a bonus. So what I'll do now is I'll run over to the ghoul and I will grab his aggro along with pressing soothe on one of those acolytes and then attack the Baroness Astria or Astriana or however you want to pronounce her name. I uh, cannot read her name properly. <laughs> so that being the case, just do what we did last time but not with an insane amount of people and then we can run out of the ziggurat. This one here is, this farming route that I like to do is mainly just for running it for the actual death reigns of the death charger mount as well. So when I'm actually doing this, this takes a little bit longer in order to do. So what I'll do is I'll open up all of the ziggurats and then I will go kill the boss. And that is Lord Arius uh, Rivendare. Now, obviously you can skip past this. You don't have to kill these bosses and run into the ziggurats. But when I'm usually farming up Stratholme anyway, I tend to find this to be a good spot to gather all the mobs up. So that's why I tend to do it anyway. So it might as well just try for the reins of the Death Charger when you're farming it. Now, there we go. We just got Blight again. Blight is a plan in which, which drops quite frequently from Stratholme. And to be honest, it's not worth an awful lot of gold. So just bear in mind with that one there. Now we're just gonna gather up the aggro with these guys and we're just going to press Soothe and then another Tiger Dash. And I just screw that up by running into a wall. But that's not the point. The next thing of note is I'll just grab up these packs of wool, these packs of ghouls, then Soothe the other pack and then run around the corner because some of these are casters and we want the casters to be in a cluster. So what we'll do now is we will just kill those and then loot. 
I don't bother to kill this guy here, the Magistrate Balathri, Bal, Bal, whatever you want to call him, the Magistrate. He only really drops the, he only really drops the key to the city, which you don't really need anymore. So that's something you may want to just, just skip altogether. He, he, he really isn't worth killing. So I don't bother with my time with that. But other than that, we're just going to come in and kill the Venom Belchers and the Spewers. This doesn't take two seconds to do, it's pretty damn easy. And then I'll use, just use my Tiger Dash to run around and kill those. I'll immediately run into this area and kill the boss, and then double back and kill those adds, as these ghouls will actually start spawning right now. Now, what I like to do is I like to just stand here and wait for them all to spawn, they'll all start attacking you. Now, you can't actually get to the boss until you kill these, so you just kill them and then you run back. They'll summon a load of adds that will actually come up now, who dares disturb the master, and you just kill those and run in. And then you can then try your attempt at Lord Arius Rivendare. And no mount for me, unfortunately, and that has been 30 attempts. And now all I'm going to do now is I will dream walk as that's taken me 3 minutes 45 seconds in order to do. And then all I do now is I immediately just dream walk, destroy, reset and dream walk back. And this will take me outside of the instance where I will just run back in again. And that means that I can do this in a roughly around about 40 odd minutes in order to do. So I find this to be a great way in order to farm this up. So all I do now is I'll just jump in and then go back into the instance. So that being the case, that is how I would do Strathome. Now, bearing in mind, I actually did get another item from Lord Arius, and this is for people who are trying to build a speed set. Now, if you're trying to build a speed set, now there, and you've got a character that ha can use two-handed swords, Lord Arius Rivendare can actually drop the Reign of the Baron Rivendare. Now obviously my dude can't actually use it because she's a druid, uh, but what it actually does is when equipped, it increases your movement speed by 10% and regenerates your health. The health part doesn't really matter, it's the 10% movement speed. When you've got that equipped, you can then pretty much get an extra 10% on your movement speed. That's great for actually building up a speed set in order to run these dungeons even faster. This is why if you were building a speed set on like a warrior, this would be a great way in order to do. So if you wanted to build a speed set on a, on a load of characters that use two-handed swords, this is something you would want to do and definitely Strathome would be a good idea in order to actually get a hold of this for transmog farming as well. So it's, so it's kind of a two for two, so to speak, because you'll eventually get the rune blade for your speed set, so then you can run it Strathome even faster, and then all the other dungeons. So that just works out. I managed to get that on my 18th run, if I remember correctly, so it does take a while in order for it to drop. Now, aside from all of that, let's just get into the gold for the day. Okay, so the gold for the day is 13,832 gold. The things of note, however, are 196 maroon ink for 3,939 gold, a monolite reinforced chassis, which I bought really cheap, and I sold for 4,714 4, gold. Basically, I was using the sniper and I managed to snag that for like 2,000 gold, so I was like, I'm going to resell that. So the next thing of note is maroon ink, 250 of those for 5,024 gold, equaling in 13,832 gold. So I'll just open up all of that mail and we will currently have 1,019,082 gold. That's pretty damn good, I'm quite happy with that going forward. And when it comes to the gold for the day on Transmog, I'm going to be doing that on a weekly basis as opposed to all of my other stuff which I do on a daily basis. So because it, it takes some time to sell Transmog, of course. So I would just like to pull it all together and then do a weekly opening of that. But this one will be uh, as and when I have the time in order to do. So that being the case, guys, that's pretty much all I have to say for the day. Have an awesome rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow.